spoofsters, and welcome to Snacks and Screams, a show for curious, thrill and chill seekers who want to shake up movie nights. I'm your host, Deandra Laser, and we're going to Disney World. Land. Well, technically we already went to Disney World, so now we're in Disney World. I review scary movies as well as unique and unusual snacks. After the review, I rate the movie and snacks out of five flaming pumpkins, which is a real rating system. It's true, I've seen it. With five being the best and one being the least best. Now let's just think. What kind of crazy person goes to both Disney parks just to review some movie? <laughs> Well, in this movie, they went to both parks. So in this episode, I'm gonna do the same. And it's definitely not because I got to tag along on Camera Guy's work trip and then beg to go to LA for my 30th birthday and it just so happens to take us like five months to make one of these. Def not cause that. Smash that like button if you think I'm lying. Lightly tap that like button if you still can't believe I look this good at 30. And subscribe to see me slowly age over time until I'm nothing but a wrinkly old husk. And look at this red hair. Comment if you think you know what I'm going through. I assume pretty much any of you watching have grown up with Disney in some form or another. Unless you've been living under a rock. Good morning. Long before I became a horror fan, Disney movies were the first thing to terrify me. Ursula becoming a flippin' kaiju in The Little Mermaid? Horrifying. The evil queen turning into the old hag? Nightmares for weeks. Pinocchio and Pleasure Island? Big yikes. Right, Gen Z? No wonder so many horror fans also love Disney. Coincidentally, did you know that there was a horror movie made in the Disney parks? And it was all done illegally. Well, bippity boppity boom. That's the movie we're exploring today. Escape from Tomorrow. Released in 2013 and starring the dad from Creepshow 3 and the lady who played college frat party girl in an episode of Unsolved Mysteries, the film is about a father slowly losing his sanity on a family vacation to Disney. Which we get. How can I spend an enormous amount of money, be uncomfortable, and listen to my children complain and whine? <laughs> Disney. The movie has a percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which is bonkers, especially since it's tied with this cinematic masterpiece. I got whatever it takes. It's a piece of cake. Escape from Tomorrow was filmed within the parks without anyone from Disney knowingly involved and shot completely guerrilla style. That was railed up. Basically, you shoot quickly and inconspicuously to stay under the radar and out of trouble. Which sounds boring. I'd rather be bad. I'm bad. To pull this off in a busy place crawling with security, an insane amount of planning went into making this film. The crew even kept sun charts so they could match the light throughout the day and maintain consistency. Cast members would come up to the crew, so they had to constantly change filming styles to avoid getting caught. As if that didn't already sound difficult, the crew filmed at both Disney World in Orlando and Disneyland in California. This allowed them to capture the actors on the rides and sights the director envisioned. They often rode the same ride for hours just to get the shot right. <coughs> <coughs> Ooh, sorry, must be seasonal allergies. It's probably cat flu. Not real. Never heard of it. The inspiration for this movie came from writer-director Randy Moore learning that the Disney parks are the second most popular place for people to commit suicide while on vacation. Allegedly. Allegedly. For this episode, of course we had to get snacks at Disney. One, because main character Daddy Jim eats at Disney in the movie, duh. And two, because one does not simply exit the Disney parks hungry. They probably got a snack bar there, right? <laughs> After that, we should probably get something to eat, though. <laughs> then we'll eat something. 
Our delicious dishes are a turkey leg from Magic Kingdom and a caramel butter bar right off the Kilimanjaro safaris in the Animal Kingdom. Fun fact, I used to work there. So go well, be well, have a magical rest of your day. Don't be afraid to go a little bit wild. Once again, my name is Peter. Thanks so much for riding me on the Simba One Holding. Well, it's time for the movie. <laughs> you have no idea where this is going. So buckle up, kitties. For your safety, remain seated with the doors closed, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside while the tram is moving. And supervise your children and any childish adults. We get into the review. Keep an eye out for our pal Hal hidden somewhere in this episode. The first two spooksters to comment where he is get a copy of Escape from Tomorrow. So good luck finding them buried bones. Let's get into it. The film opens in black and white on Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. We are immersed in the sounds of the coaster, traversing the track, riders happily screaming, and eerie fairy tale music. As the tension mounts, we continue through a montage of the parks and see some French youths. We'll get into that later. It comes to a mind-blowing conclusion when someone loses their head. A common theme for this movie, in a different way. Oh, like crazy. Got it. If you're taking notes, make sure to highlight and underline that sentence about the decapitation thing and then start drawing tiny question marks everywhere and after that write other things around it like, are they ever going to address this? Or like, is this a metaphor or maybe? Is that actually Jim and does he die and the rest of the movie is just the fleeting thoughts of a brain starved for oxygen and turkey legs? Now for those of you who aren't taking notes, don't worry, they never mention the scene again. After the decapitation times, Jim is on the phone being fired by his boss Roger with basically no explanation and they straight up make it sound like a conspiracy from the get. There are so many loose ends in this movie and that's two. We're like 17 seconds in! In happy contrast to Jim's situation, the Disney imagery is pretty heavy right away. While he's being fired, Jim is standing on the balcony of the Contemporary Resort, overlooking the Magic Kingdom. As if he could sense it was his childly duty to make things worse, Jim's son Elliot decides to be a menace to society and locks him outside on the balcony. Kids. Jim remembers how cell phones work and calls his wife to unlock the door. From the moment we meet her, it's jammed into our turkey leg fuel brains that Emily is not so chill. Emily, your Dennis the Menace kid just locked your dodo husband outside and you're mad at him? Poor Jim. Some family. Never turn your back on them. Jim doesn't tell them about the firing and instead heads out with the family for their last day in the parks. They get in line to board the monorail and people all over are coughing. Uh-oh. We then see two super young French girls board the monorail. They're like 13 to 15 years old. And Jim is instantly fascinated, which is not very cash money of him. Once they enter the park, the family takes a happy photo in front of Cinderella's castle. Now, what was it that we said about taking group photos in horror movies? Never take group photos before trips or adventures or whatever because we all know what that means as far as horror movies go you're all gonna die they begin to park hop around on various rides and this is where you can see it was shot in two different places on the snow white ride which is in disneyland not disney world 
Sarah, the daughter, talks about how she's scared of the old hag. As kids do, she asks her parents if witches are real, and her mom says no. Foreshadowing? In the next scene, Jim attempts to kiss his wife on Winnie the Pooh. But they're not, like, actually on the fictional character of Winnie the Pooh, like, crawling around on that big old Winnie the Pooh belly, flopping around like they're on a half-full waterbed, but it's actually filled with that Winnie the Pooh, honey, and they're just chilling on that big old fuzzy bear navel, just doing poo things. No, they are not on the belly of a fictional bear. They're just on the ride of Winnie the Pooh. How many times do you think I could say poo before they come after us? Okay, enough poo talk. As expected, Emily pushes him away. She, like, really hates him. So I hope she wasn't with him for that sweet, sweet moolah he's been making with Uncle Rico. Dang it. Jim's day starts to get better as he and the family board, it's a small world. But it's not such a happy ride as Jim starts hallucinating that his family and the ride are evil. Fun fact, this is one of the rides that the casting crew rode more than a dozen times. With a 45 minute wait, I would have lost my mind. After they get off the most annoying ride in the world, Elliot asks to go on Buzz Lightyear while Sarah wants to go on the teacups. So Jim and Emily decide to split up to take the kids on their favorite rides. After waiting in line, the Buzz Lightyear ride breaks down. So Jim does what any caring father would do. Stocks French teens on a roller coaster that makes his son blow chunks. Oh, also, Emily calls Jim while they're in line and peep this profile pic. It's like the happiness has been sucked from her face. Want a sucked face? No. <laughs> the family eventually meets up and Jim is instantly in trouble because Elliot the Menace is covered in half-digested mouse pancakes. So they do a parent swap. Jim, now with Sarah, immediately follows the Parisian youths into the confusing darkness of Tom Sawyer's caves. A new sentence for me. He loses Sarah and finds her crying outside of a cave after she's been pushed by a child made of approximately 50% Mountain Dew. When Jim arrives, he's confronted by Mountain Dew Kid's weird dad. I will now attempt to describe this person. Motorized grocery cart riding, bowl cut, having neck brace wearing, popsicle slurping, foghorn leghorn in human form. Who's responsible for this unwarranted attack on my person? Jim takes Sarah to the nurse to tend to her injuries. And dude's just oogling the nurse because of course he is. Meanwhile, the nurse starts talking about some kind of cat flu going around and that you may be a carrier and not know it. And what the heck is cat flu? Cat. Sorry. All patched up, Jim takes Sarah back into the park where he gets himself a turkey leg. So before we get too far into the shenanigans, let's take a moment for our regularly scheduled snack break. All right, guys, we are here in the Magic Kingdom. We happened to pick up a turkey leg that the dad was eating within the movie. Never had it before. Supposedly, they say it's made of emu, but it's not. It's just a giant male turkey. I'm ready to take a bite. Here we go. If I could do it. Oh my God, that's a tough skin. I mean, it's super salty, smoky flavor, juicy and greasy, just so you know. Um, hard to chew. That's okay. We're just getting one time. I'm good. You know, when you get in deeper, it's actually more moist. It's not as salty. I hear there's like 2,000 calories in this alone. I feel like a caveman. Sorry, Mom. Just talking with my mouth full of food. Give it a shot. If you're ever in Disney, try a turkey leg. Where were we? Oh, yes. Jim is talking it up with some random lady in a Dollar General wig. She's mysterious. She's creepy. And I don't know if her acting is meant to be terrible or what, but ugh. She also tells Jim that he's gobbling up some emu, not turkey. Yeah, did you know this? I recently learned there's some rumor that the turkey legs in Disney are emu. Yeah. 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 Oh, dude. 
It's a llama. Next thing you know, he goes from oogling her necklace to Epcot and her magic kingdom. Jim regains consciousness and flees with Sarah back to the hotel where they find Emily and Elliot at the pool. So they go for a swim and he climbs into the pool. Huh, sir, you haven't bathed. And oh yeah, who else is there? <laughs> Bonjour, c'est la fille francaise. It's the French girls. And like the predator he is, Jim floats over toward them. Back in the hotel room, the fam is getting ready and Jim is on the balcony, drinking a beer. He notices a van carrying out a dead body? <laughs> Curious and random, but on brand for this movie. A lot of vans. Wow, big day for vans. Okay, Jim comes back in and stubs his toe. Well, basically explodes it, but no biggie. They gotta get to Epcot, the home of the giant golf ball. Or as Jim calls it. Wow. Giant testicle. You can tell Jim can't hang as he pounds drinks around the world. Dude is chucking on rides, his toes bleeding everywhere, and he's scaring 50% Mountain Dew boys in bathrooms. I can't help but feel bad for him though. Maybe we should go easy on Jim. He is having a garbage day. Garbage day? Huh? No! I better not be getting sick, meow. Sorry, are you saying meow? Am I saying meow? Emily is waiting for Jim with the kids and sees the two French girls. But something's off with one of their faces. <laughs> now is there a monster under there? <laughs> Jim comes out of the bathroom and Emily starts freaking out, saying something is wrong with that place. Yeah, Em. It's called Orlando, the armpit of Florida. She flips on Jim again and rattles off a list of the things Jim is doing wrong, including oogling the French girls and his secret phone call. Now Jim admits he was fired and sends Emily into an even worse spiral. She lashes out at Sarah with a huge slap and she connects for a direct hit. No! Emily stops, horrified by what she has done. So she skadoots with Elliot, leaving Sarah with Jim. You know, the guy that likes French youths and has that toe thing. Pay close attention because I'm about to explode weird ointments all over your screen. Jim and Sarah go on Sorn, and a naked woman on the screen is beckoning Jim. Guess who Jim sees after the ride? Our favorite Frenchies. Can't say that. Franchies? Sure. One of the Franchies makes her way over to Jim. She smooches Sarah on the cheek, then applies chapstick. She takes Sarah's hand and heads off with Jim to the Epcot ball. It explodes and chaos ensues. But wait. JK LOL, it's a vision. Literary geniuses! Back in reality, the Franchi girl asks Jim to join them. But when he refuses, she's like, Are you sure? Because something bad will happen if you don't. So he's like, mm, No. So she hawks the biggest, wettest loogie all over his face. Jim suddenly wakes up from his loogie dream and Sarah disappears. He's frantically looking for her. Then some space people show up and tase him. The screen cuts to an intermission. I'm not joking. They put one in. I guess so will we for a little butter surprise in the animal kingdom. Why would you make me read that? Have you been here the whole time? Who are you talking to? Hey, Spooksters, we've got our second snack, a Werther's Original Caramel Butter Bar. Blah, blah, blah. Let's take a look. Ooh, look at that. It's definitely buttery. Got that caramel in the center there. And maybe some kind of shortbread on top? I don't know. Let's try it. Mmm. Then toast that caramel. That's definitely like a shortbread on the top. 
and the butter is a nice kind of salty complement. It's creamy. Oh, this is so good. I actually heard about this on a Disney food blog, and I was like, I gotta get that. I'm so happy I found it. It's everything I wanted. Really good. I'm a fan. Jim wakes up in a chair, spinning around. Behind him is a scientist. I know this because of the lab coat. Otherwise, it'd be pretty tough to tell because he decorates his lab like a teenage boy's bedroom. You know what I'm talking about. You have a poster on your wall? Yeah. I slapped the hand to it like an hour ago. Jim deduces he's under Spaceship Earth, and apparently the scientist works for Siemens, who sponsors Spaceship Earth. Science man flips some switch, and Jim's head gets covered in an Epcot ball. Wow, it's a giant testicle. The scientist explains to Jim that he isn't using his full imagination, and I guess there were some things he was supposed to do, but didn't because it's all part of a grand scheme. Ugh, I don't know, I wasn't following. Now Jim pulls out a tiny, likely generic Neosporin bottle from his pocket, and he gives it a little squish. He gives it, he, he gives it a little squirt all over flipping everywhere. He squirts it all over the naked wall, ladies. He squirts it all over the Siemens control console. And that squirt somehow frees him? And so Jim escapes and then defeats the scientist who is actually a robot. But not very strong like you would think a robot would be. Nope, weak boy. Jim emerges from the sewers of Disney to resume searching for Sarah. And it's a Disney nightmare vacation reunion. There's the creepiest fireworks of ever. And the Frenchies are there with their super cute French boyfriends. And the 50% Mountain Dew kid and his weird salad bowl haircut daddy are taunting Jim into a fight. It cuts to Sarah drinking something the lady gives her. Kinda looks like alcohol. Forever unclean. Forever unclean. After some turkey leg based detective work, Jim deduces that witchy wig lady has Sarah. He confronts her, only to find out this one's a former Disney princess whom super hug crushed some kid, and now she's a witch and wants to like use Sarah for something bad. I'm not allowed to have tuna anymore. Jim grabs Sarah and wig lady goes after them. Sarah smacks Wig Lady's amulet and it explodes. So she gives her a balloon and they just kind of leave. When they get back, Jim sings Sarah to sleep and you think, maybe he's gonna be a good dad now. But then he starts to sweat. Could be the stress. I mean, the dude got fired, rejected, hung over, Epcotted, toe exploded, assaulted multiple times and spit on. Oh wait, no, it's that. We cut to a montage of empty Disney, interrupted by Jim having the runs on the toilet. Coming out of me like lava! He coughs up some hairballs. Is this the cat flu? It's the cat flu. Elliot wakes up to find Jim with blood coming out of his mouth, begging for Elliot to help him. Elliot closes the door on Papa. Elliot sucks. Elliot. Emily wakes up. Where's Jim? She opens the bathroom door. And there's Jim, dead, blood everywhere, with cat eyes. But not like regular dead. He cat dead, which is nine times worse. The Disney quarantine team shows up. Quarantine team, quarantine, quarantine, quarantine shows up. But they're not like quarantines, they're adults on a team. Everyone is crying, except for Elliot the Menace, whom they spot. The suits place a hand on him, and he finally gets to experience the Buzz Lightyear ride. As Jim is taken away, we see a familiar face, that hard body from Soren. Oh yeah, she shows back up with undead Jim in a flippin' fedora. What the hell? Fedora Jim and dead Jim cross paths as dead Jim is wheeled into a van. OMG, like earlier, what Jim saw. It ends on the two French girls as Tinkerbells, winking at the camera. The end. What the fudge? <laughs> now it's time for my favorite part, the rating. 
things. Now, I really don't know what the fudge. Is Jim getting a chance to relive his life as cool Fedora Jim? Roll the hat down his arm like Fred Astaire. I don't know what the heck this movie is. It's a mess. But the one thing I will say is that it definitely shows a different side of Disney. The parent side. Every time I go to Disney, I'm like, why am I here? This is so busy and muggy and expensive and full of turkey legs. Why am I here? And then a year passes and somehow I forgot all of that and want to go again. I can't imagine going with a whole litter of kids. Bunch of sticky mountain dew boys. No. I think the movie probably had some purpose, but it's not clear to me. It's disjointed and low budget. But I do give them immense credit for guerrilla filmmaking. Especially after trying to film our own episode there. Cast members watch you like hawks, and every day is unexpected. However, that green screen work makes our stuff seem pro. If anything, this movie is weird and worth a watch. Once. Especially if you're a Disney adult. Nevertheless, I give it... Two flaming pumpkins out of a possible five flaming pumpkins. Which is a real rating system. And now for the snacks. First up, the turkey legs. At first it did not seem too great, and then after that it was actually pretty delicious. And it's a classic Disney snack. So I give it my rating of... Three flaming pumpkins out of a possible five flaming pumpkins. Which is a real rating system. And last, but certainly not least, is the caramel butter bar. Listen, I love caramel. It's the best anything with caramel. You got me. It's kind of a generic snack, but it was so buttery and so sweet and so good that it gets my rating of four and a half flaming pumpkins out of a possible five flaming pumpkins. Which is a real rating system. Listen, nothing has wowed me enough to get a five yet. Yet. That's all for our show this time. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Cause if you don't, I'm gonna give you the cat flu. Meow. Tune in next time as I conquer another fear, try another tasty treat, and harass you with more of my sweet, sweet, spooky whisklers. I mean whiskers. I mean...